What the club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You're leaving me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Then after class, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again, 30. Hey, real quick, um, what's the importance of the information that he's bringing to y'all right now? Because I know sometimes we, we, we hear the information, we say, yeah, that's good, that's cool. But what's the importance behind it? Because when you look at, are y'all from Macon? You from Macon? You from Macon? Grew up in Macon? I'm not from Macon, but I'm familiar with Macon, right? I remember one time when I was in college, I was playing ball out here. And I remember at a McDonald's, there was a... Uh, it was actually smoking crack in the McDonald's. I'm like, you only see this type of stuff in our communities. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a, it's a common thing for us to hear about somebody, what, getting shot, right? Somebody getting put to death. Somebody sleeping with somebody else's baby mama, right? Those are common things that we, we hear about in our communities, right? But the question is, why? How did we get here as a people? Because the Holy Bible has told us that we God's chosen people. Right? That's what the brother was bringing out for y'all, that the so-called blacks and Hispanics and natives, that we the chosen people of God. But guess what? Have we learned that as a people? Y'all go to church? You go to church, sis? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. What about you? No. Our praise. Because in church, guess what they taught us? They taught us this right here. Bring it out. Right? We all seen this man before, right? White Jesus. When you Google Jesus on your phone right now, guess what's going to pop up? Which one going to pop up? This one or that one? He is, right? But the Bible describes him as a black man, though. So the question is, how, how are they able to get away with this stuff when the truth is right in our faces? The churches have been lying to us for years, y'all. Yeah, right. For years, we've been thinking that we've been learning the Bible, but guess what? We haven't been learning the Bible. Give me Isaiah 50, uh, 53, uh, one? I'm trying to blank. No, the, oh, one in verse three, I'm sorry. Huh? You got to go. But look, sis, this information that we're bringing out is important because the whole time we've grown up, I don't know how old y'all are, but y'all look at, at least over 30, right? Late 30s, over 30, whatever the case may be, right? Our whole lives, we've been taught that we ain't nothing but black, and African American, right? But your shirt is black. Where's the land of black at? Your, your, your leggings are black. Where's the land of black at, sis? What about Africa America? Where's that at? Because that's what they tell us we are. But you see how we get titles placed on us every all, every so often, every every decade. I want you to listen to sis before you leave. Read that. Isaiah chapter one and verse three. The ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. The Bible says that the ox knows his owner, and the ass, a donkey, knows his master's crib. Meaning what? They know who, they're, who they belong to, and they know where their home is. Right? That's what the Bible just said. I want y'all to listen. Read. But. It says, but. Read. But. Israel. Who's Israel again? Who? No, we Israel. Oh, yeah. They told us that they Israel, but they lied to us. It says, but Israel, remember, I want y'all to stay with me. It says that the uh, um, donkey and the ass, they know their homeland and they know their God. Hold on, sis, before you leave, right? It says they know their homeland and they know their God. It says, but Israel, the so-called blacks and Hispanics read, but Israel does not know. It says Israel don't know, read, my people doth not consider. God says that his people don't even consider who they are. They don't consider who their God is. They don't consider where their homeland is. You see what I'm saying? Our people, we don't know where home is. We don't know who our God is because guess what? We've been given this man throughout slavery. 
We the only people that don't that got a God that don't look like us, y'all. That's why our communities are destroyed. That's why the men in our communities jacked up. That's why the sisters in our communities are out of order. Why? Because we don't know where we from and we don't know who our God is, y'all. That's an important thing to know. That's why we get up in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning to go work a job from 7 to damn 4 or 5 o'clock, get off, try to grab you something to eat just to do it all again the next day. And at the end of the week when you get your paycheck, you look at your paycheck, you're like, damn, that's it. Huh? That's why I work for myself on the side. But he, but, 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 he, but that's why I'm moving myself to work for myself. Right. That's to all praise. Myself. But guess what? Even when we create our own businesses, are they prosperous like the businesses in the so-called white communities? Yeah, me, what I'm striving for, for my children. Huh? They, I'm striving to get a business for my children. Right. Right. Not, not for for them to work for the white people. I want them to work for themselves. But this is what I'm telling you, that's right? Because right. I got my for. I got my own business. Many of us yeah. are business owners, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, guess what we got to do? We are subject to pay taxes to this man. Everything we want, guess what? You have to give me that Deuteronomy 28. I'm gonna show you something because it's like this for a reason. It's like this because we broke God's commandments. Yeah, yeah, they, they did. We and we still do it to this day. For instance, today is a Sabbath day, right? How many of us out here keeping the Sabbath? Ain't none of us, right? Well, we are, but what I'm saying is our people aren't. You see what I'm saying? So when I say us, I mean our people as a whole. We're not keeping God's commandments. Ain't supposed to be no buying today. Family dollars should be shut down today. Ain't supposed to be no cooking today. Guess what? It shouldn't be no grills popped open today. You see what I'm saying? But we look at this stuff, we say it's harmless and that we just what? We just trying to provide for our families. But what's more important? Keeping God's commandments or doing what we want to do. Because ultimately, because ultimately if, if we do what God say, ain't he going to take care of us? Right? I want you to listen to this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness and with gladness of heart. So, to bring you up to speed, what's your name, bro? Travis. So you saying though? No, so you saying though? No, we don't supposed to cook. No, you said it was Travis. Travis. Okay. We don't supposed to cook another day. So what are we supposed to do today? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. As soon as I finish this one, I got you. I got your answer. That's a great question, by the way. Right. What is supposed to be like? Right. All praises. How y'all doing? So what my man Travis just asked, sisters, is today is a Sabbath day. He said if we're not supposed to be buying, selling, or cooking, well, what we supposed to be doing today on the Lord's day, right? And that's what we're going to bring to y'all because what I'm going over is that when you look at this sign, my sister, the so-called blacks, the Hispanics, and Native Americans, we make up the 12 tribes of Israel that you read about in the Bible, right? We the Israelites. We the real Jews according to the Bible. How do we know that? I'm going to prove it to you right now because the Bible said that because of the disobedience of the children of Israel, that there was going to be curses that God was going to punish them with. And I'm going to show you how we the only people on this earth today that fit those curses. That's how we know that we, the, the curses identify who the children of Israel are. That's how we know that we those people. Right? Read it. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So we didn't want to serve God with joyfulness and gladness. Because God said we was his chosen people. So this is one of the curses God said would, befall, uh, would fall upon us. Read. For the abundance of all things. Therefore. It says therefore. Since you didn't want to listen to God. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent the enemy? Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Bible says that God was going to send enemies against us. Right? Now let's figure out how those enemies was going to come against the children of Israel. Read. In hunger. In hunger. Now let me ask y'all a question. When we hungry, where do we get our food from? The store, right? What stores? Which ones? Name some. Piggly Wiggly. What else? Kroger. Publix. Walmart. Sam's Club. BJ's. Right? All these different places. Now let me ask you a question. How many of those places owned by us? Bring it out. None of them, right? None of them. Who they owned by? The white man. 
It's all right to say the white man, y'all. But that's how that's how bad we've been beaten down by these people that we're afraid to even say the white man did it. It's just true. Guess what? We don't own them. The same people who enslaved us are the ones who own our food. That's a curse that God said will fall upon us because of our disobedience, y'all. Read. And hunger uh -huh. and, and thirst. Now, even the water that comes freely from the sky, the rainwater, guess what? We get taxed on that stuff. When you go into Family Dollar right now, guess what? You can't just walk in there and say, hey, my bad. I got this bottle of Dasani. I'm going to holler at you later. <laughs> you can't do that. They going to call the cops on your butt. Check it out. You can't do that, but guess what? The world was given to you. Now you subject to pay for your water. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you, if you, even in sports, right? We was, uh, when, uh, they call a timeout, but when you head to the bench, guess what? They throw you a bottle of Gatorade, Powerade. Guess who owned that stuff? The same people that oppressed us, y'all. The same ones. We go to our enemies for food, for hunger, for thirst, read, and in thirst. And the nakedness. Nakedness, y'all. Listen, that means it's talking about the clothes that you put on your back. It says you was going to serve your enemy for your clothes. Guess what? Even back then, on the plantations, y'all, we got the scraps of everything. See, we think just because we ain't got the shackles on us now that we free and that it's changed. No. The white man got smart on y'all. He said, you know what? I ain't even got to, I ain't even got to beat these niggas. All I got to do is mentally destroy them. It's like training a dog. When you train a dog and you put him on that leash, once you take that leash off, he know, okay, master said I can't go past that line right there. That's how we is. That's how we are, y'all. So the clothes that even on our back, our people kill each other for what? For Jordans, the new Yeezys. So, to the point where we will rob each other in our communities for this stuff. Right? If you know, if you, you, you'll see your neighbor, right? Your neighbor will be moving in. How y'all doing, y'all? Your neighbor will be moving in. And you watching to see what's, what's moving. I'm not saying you in particular, but that's how people are. We oh, they got a flat screen TV they bringing in that joint. Oh, he got a, bu a bunch of boxes of Jordans. Right? Especially the young ones. That's what they look for. They're like, man, we about to rob this nigga. All for material things. God says that these things are curses. Read. And in nakedness. Uh -huh. And in what of all things. Hold on, my sister. Don't go nowhere yet. I want you to hear this last verse, sis. My sister, listen. This is the greatest information you gonna get. Listen, how many of y'all ever been taught that we the greatest people on this earth? Raise your hand if you ever been taught that. We ain't never been taught that. You know what we've been taught? This is what we've been taught. That we ain't nothing but niggas. This is what we've been taught. For instance, I'm going to show you something. How old is your daughter? Is this your daughter? 11. She's 11. Sis, let me ask you a question. Don't answer for her, right? Which one of these is Jesus? Point to Jesus. This one? Come close so I can make sure I'm, I'm getting it right. Just point at him. Touch the sign. Whichever one is Jesus. Now, I want y'all to pay attention. She pointed to which one? Which one? The white one, right? What color is she? Brown. She's, this, is a, a, this is our young sister. This is a, our young princess of the Most High God, right? And she's going to grow up believing that Jesus looked like her oppressor. So now, guess what? You could, you could go back over there if you want to. So now, guess what that does? To a young, a young person. Because we are the result of that. All of us grew up that same way. We're just older now, right? But when you grow up knowing that your oppressor is the greatest person to walk this earth, you're going to end up hating yourself. Now you know why it's okay for me to go to the neighborhood and kill my brother and not think nothing about it, right? Wow. When we kill each other, it's like, yeah, man, that nigga's got what he deserved, right? That's what we do. But when the cops kill us, it's like, oh, Jesus killed us. The white man, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. The white man shouldn't be doing it. Why are you killing us? But I'm going to show you all something because the Bible does not describe Jesus as a white man. Re give me revelation. But this is the trick bag that they have us in. In slavery, we thought that they was teaching us the Bible. No, they was teaching us Christianity. Christianity ain't in the Bible. Christianity ain't in the Bible. Christ was not teaching the doctrine of Christianity that's on the earth today. And I'm going to prove that. But read that. 
Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. I know. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation means the revealing. So now, now that you're going to learn this, my sister, guess what? You got to understand this and grow up knowing that Jesus Christ looked like you. That's right. Jesus Christ looked like your people. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the book of Revelations is pro prophetic about things that's going to come to pass. But now, go to verse 14, because he's going to describe what Jesus looked like. Read. No. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says his head on his face and his head were white like wool. Now. My sister, again, right? So we read that it says Jesus had hair like was white and it was woolly. Which one of these pictures have white woolly hair? All uh, praise to the most high, right? So that's what the Bible say Jesus looked like. It said he got white woolly hair. Now we're going to read another thing of what he looked like, read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. It says Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire. Why? Because Christ drank wine. Christ was dealing with all the issues in, in, in Israel. Guess what? Christ drank wine in moderation. And what happened when we drink? The whites of your eyes, they turn red, right? He wasn't shooting. He wasn't cyclops shooting laser beams at his eyes at people. He wasn't doing that. But his eyes was red with wine. And a prophecy in, in Genesis said that they would be, right? So when you look at this, this one is the description of that. We never got that depiction through this man. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. So now you look down at his feet. Are your feet the same color as the rest of your body? Or are they a different color? Same color. Same color, right? So you ain't going to pull your shoe off right now and you got a white man feet, right? You're going to have a black man feet. Your feet going to be the same color. Right? It might be a little bit lighter being that it's not as exposed to the sun, right? But then they wasn't wearing sneakers like we wearing sneakers now, right? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. It says like unto fine brass. You know what fine brass is? What color is it? Brown. Brown, right? It's brown. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. It said it was so brown, so dark as if it was burnt in a furnace. So how can we get this pale skinned man out of being burnt in a furnace? How are they able to get away with saying that this is Jesus, y'all? How we been in this trick bag for so long? Because we'll, when we get money, when the rappers, the ball players, the entertainers, they get money, right? They go buy a chain. And who they got on the chain? They got this man on the chain. And they think they made it. God blessing all the trap niggas, right? That's what they say. But now we understand which God we've been serving. We've been serving the white man for a long time, y'all. But the Bible is the most pro-black book on the earth. That's right. Right. And his feet like unto fine brass, uh -huh. as if they burned in a furnace. Now, get me Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Because the problem, the problem is that we have been destroyed through captivity. How you doing, my brother? You know your nationality? Look at this sign right here. Which one you which one you come from? On the on the right hand side is what they call us. On the left hand side is what God calls us. Y'all see yourselves on the sign, y'all? Where's your father from? Your father American black? Huh? Okay, you be from the tribe of Judah, right? American blacks are the tribe of Judah, right? We know this because when you read the book of Genesis 49, it tells you where we would be in the last days. So now, knowing that you're from the tribe of Judah, and we just described that Jesus Christ was a black man, let's read that. Give me Hebrews, and let's read that. I want y'all to listen to this. Read 14. that. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Y'all heard that? Y'all heard that? My brothers, y'all heard that? Read that. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. 
For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Uh -huh. So it says that Christ sprang out of the tribe of Judah also. So if y'all are from the tribe of Judah, it makes sense that Christ would be a black man also. You see what I'm saying? So he can't be a white man. So now, the fact that we've been lied to all of these years, what does that mean about everything that we know now? It's questionable. It's questionable, right? So for instance, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, all of these things that we celebrate. Do y'all think those are godly holidays? So why are we celebrating? Uh huh. Give me uh, Matthew 15, verse 3. I know you got Colossians too. So now, the Bible says that we was going to go into slavery, right, via cargo slave ships. I'm going to read that too. Read that first. Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So Christ had to ask our people, listen, why transgress the commandments of God for tradition? Because this man has taught us tradition. Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all of these things that when you look back at its roots, it's pagan. It's pagan to its roots, right? Being it's a false god, it's of idol worship. So now, we've been accustomed to serving this man's religion. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Because... No, this was a real man that was painted as Christ. But was he teaching and preaching? No, he wasn't. I'm. You mean this white Jesus isn't a real man? But this person right. that was depicted was a real man. Right, but he wasn't. He wasn't preaching and teaching the gospel. No, not at all. Right. But what they have done is tried to take the gospel that this man was teaching, right, the Black Messiah, and erase it, and now give you this man right here. The white folks, white folks, the Caucasian race. The Bible calls them Esau, according to the Bible. Right? So I'm going to show y'all because white folks are the only people who've, also, who've always been uh, different shades of red. They're the only people. They're not even white. They call themselves white to sound pure, holy, right? Separate. But they're not white. They use that as a to play on your psyche. Right? And that's why they call us, quote unquote, black. Because usually when you, what you associate with black? What are some of the things that we usually associate with being black? Bad things, right? Satan, right? Evil, darkness, all of these things we associate with being black. So that's why when we think about ourselves, we think about ourselves in a negative light. Right? What I got you older? No, go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. So I'm going to show y'all how we even got to this point here where now we're subject to serving this man's religion. When I say this man's religion, I mean white man. the white man. Correct. And it's all other nations have um, made agreement with this man also. See what I'm saying? Because when you look at society and you look at the social norms and the social construct, we fall at the, as blacks, we fall at the bottom. We ain't at the top. You got white folks, you got all the other nations in between, and then you got us at the very bottom. Nobody wants to trade places with you in your condition. See what I'm saying? If you go ask a Chinese man right now, hey, switch spots with me. They, you think they're going to do that? Hell no. Right? Read that. Uh, read verse um, 40... Read verse 47 again. 48. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. So now... So now, what I was going over earlier with the other brother was that you you know any history about the children of Israel? My brother, you know any history about the children of Israel? Huh? I can't I can't hear you. I'm trying to hear you. Like the Bible is just not real. Okay, that's perfect. So look, I can work with that. Right, perfect. All right. So now I want y'all to hear what he said. No, no, no. Listen, we listen. What you what you don't understand is we love this. Right. Like I would rather you be honest about what you believe so that we can know 
what we need to address. I mean, because I many of... I grew up in the church. Uh-huh. I did. Wait, I mean... But see, that's... that's something I was taught, bro. This ain't something... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were I was taught that. I was always taught that white man was... Uh-huh. Who to believe in, you feel me? Like, that Most I definitely. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying the shit. I ain't saying he ain't real none of that. I'm just telling you what I grew up like. Okay. What's your name? Tay. Tay? Israel. Israel? Linda, okay. Tay, what you said was perfect, right? Because look at the look at the brothers you see in purple. Right? How many of y'all came out of Christian religion? Raise your hand. We all grew up the same way as you. We was forced to go to church, forced to be Baptist, forced to be Pentecostal. You know what? I got to a point, I ain't believe the Bible either. But I'm gonna show you where that changed at, right? I'm about to prove it to you though. But so now, Tate, if I say it's a black man's book, you gotta ask me, well, how can you prove that? Right? That's that would be my next question. Because I've been taught this is the white man book my whole life. Right. You sitting up here telling me that this is the pro-black book. How you know that? Prove that to me. I'm gonna prove it to you, right? So now, give me Deuteronomy first give me Deuteronomy seven and six. Because what I'm trying to do is help y'all and I'm trying to set the precedent of what was going on right here, right? Because What's going on? I got you. How you doing, my brother? What we going over is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who we are according to the Bible, right? So now, so now, what we teaching, what we, hey, uh, soldier, he good, let him. So now, what we teaching is that the people on this side, the people on this side right here, right? That's the Israelites, is what y'all got to understand. So now, when Moses came on the scene and delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? Y'all know that? That history? He gave them what? What did God give to Moses to give to the children of Israel? Ten commandments. It was more than ten, but commandments, right? right? Commandments. So, Moses gets instruction from the Most High God. The Most High God tells his children, listen. If y'all obey my commandments, there's going to be blessings. If y'all disobey me, there's going to be punishment or curses, right? Y'all got kids? You got kids? You got kids? When your child obeys what you tell them to do, what we do? We reward them, right? They get all A's or whatever the case is, good grades. You like, all right, let's go get some pizza, whatever. Well, however you reward them, right? But now, let's say you tell your kids, listen, your room need to be clean, your bed need to be made every day before you head to school. And now you get up and they bed ain't made, right? The first time you might show them some mercy. Right? Yeah. But now let's say it's a repetitive behavior. And every morning you get up, your kid ain't listening to you. What you going to end up doing? Disciplining them, right? I'm going to show y'all God is no different. Now read Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So it says God chose us to be a special people. We not like the other nations. See, everybody else can get away with certain things, but God says we are special people to him. Read. The Lord our God hath chosen me to be a special people up unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So it says that we're supposed to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth, right? So now, we can look and we can see that we're not above all people right now, right? right? So now we have to see and ask, well, damn, if we're supposed to be above and we at the bottom, we must have done something wrong. Deuteronomy 28. Now I'm going to read y'all the curses that God says he was going to put on his children for disobeying him. And I want y'all to tell me who fit those curses. Because there's only one nation of people that can fit them. Right. Whether it be us or the other nations, somebody has to fit these curses, right? Now, read verse 43, I think it is. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. 37. 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So it says you're going to become a proverb, a byword amongst all nations where the Lord scattered thee. When you look at the places that we've been scattered to, y'all, guess what? We've been called names outside of our God given names, right? Those are bywords. Proverbs are wise sayings about you. Like colored people time, right? Or black folks love chicken. There's all, or um, 
Yeah, yeah, colored people time. How they call uh, the Spanish wetbacks and stuff like that, right? Black folks love watermelon. Those type of things are proverbs about us, right? So now, God says, among the nations where I scattered you, those things are going to befall you. You're going to be called Jamaican, Haitian, right? All these different names that God didn't give you. You don't find those names in the Bible nowhere, do you? You don't find them in the Bible. But now we understand why we got so many different titles. Oh, you're black. You're Negro, you're colored, you're Afro-American, you're African-American. What the hell are we? Why does our nationality change every decade? Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Verse 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee. So the strangers are talking about the other nations. Because when we came out of Egypt, the other nations tried to cleave on to us, right? So it says the, the other nations that are with you, read, shall get above thee very high. He said the other nations going to get above you very high, read. And thou shalt come down very low. He says you're going to come down very low. It's going to get descriptive in what he means by that, read. He shall lend to thee. It says the nations that's around you going to lend to you. Read. And thou shalt not lend to him. So now, speeding up to today, when we need a, a house, a car, education, where we got to go to to get that money, y'all? We go to the white man, right? We don't go to our own banks to do that. Bring it out. We got a very small percentage of, of, of ownership in this world. You see that? It says, he shall lend to thee, but thou shalt not lend to him. Read. Tay, what's going on, man? You're supposed to be listening. Read. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Uh -huh. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. It says, you're going to be the tail, right? Verse 47. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart. So it says, because you didn't serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Read. For the abundance of all things. Uh -huh. Therefore. It says, therefore, Tay. You listening? This your answer to your question, Tay. You got to listen. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy. God says, because you disobeyed me, I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Did he say who's going to serve our friends? He said what? Enemies. We ain't not, we ain't even never learned that they, that somebody had enemies on this earth in church. We never learned that in church. We was taught God love everybody, all peaceful, and we all gonna hug hands and kiss babies in the kingdom. But God says that He sent our enemies against us. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee in huh? hunger and in thirst. Say, hey, you gotta listen. I know you gotta go, but listen, you got this is a question you ask. I'm trying to answer your question. Huh? Okay, you got, listen, this is the greatest information you're going to get, bro. Right. I'm sure you don't wait it. We don't, Black folks, we'll wait all day to get some booty, right? We'll wait all day to get some weed. We'll do all of these things, but when it comes to the word of God, bro, I got to go, bro. What's up? I got to go. I mean, I got to have to go in the toilet. I've been listening I got, to you, but, but guess you what? Ain't got to your point, but guess man. what? We ain't supposed to be doing none of that today. Right. That's what I'm trying to show you. Today, the Sabbath day, we're not supposed to be getting no cuts today, paying for cuts, right? Okay, read that. Therefore shalt thou serve the enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in huh? hunger. In hunger. So it says you're going to serve your enemies in hunger. Family Dollar, Publix, Walmart, Kroger. All these things are owned by who, y'all? The white man, right? And in thirst. In thirst. The water. The, the, y'all favorite drinks. Your favorite liquors. All of them owned by who, y'all? Read. And in nakedness. Your clothes, y'all. That's what we was talking about when y'all first walked up, I believe. Right? The sneakers. The, the uh, fancy belts. The fancy watches. The fancy jackets. The fa fancy shirts. All these things are owned by who, y'all? Oh, yeah. Read. And in what of all things. It's God says if you want anything. If you want a house. If you want a car. If you want a job. If you want to even bury your, your peoples that pass, you got to go to the white man. Everything we do, we go to the white man. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. It says that same enemy God was going to send against you was going to be the same person that put yokes of iron upon your necks. 
God says that was going to happen because of our disobedience. So now, oh, finish it up. And, excuse me. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he has destroyed thee. Now, mind you, it says that the yokes of iron would be on our necks until we was destroyed. Showing you what? Because we ain't got chains on us right now, do we? So what does that show you about the black man and black woman in America today? We've been destroyed, y'all. So now, guess what? Now we no longer have any reverence for our history. We no longer want to debunk the, the lies that have been taught to us. All we care about today is drugs, club, women, right? Whoremongering. If you look at TikTok and social media today, our sisters are on there. Guess what? Just all they do is show their body on Instagram all day. All we do is whore our sisters out in our communities. Why are we the only community that does that, y'all? Because we have indoctrinated, we have uh, taken on this man's philosophy. We haven't taken on what, what the Bible been talking about. Read verse 68, because it's going to get even more descriptive. So what I'm doing, Tate, I'm trying to prove to you how we know that the Bible is a true book. Because one of your statements was, is that you don't really believe in none of this. So if the Bible is a false book, you got to show me how. Because much of what we learned in Christianity has been lies, y'all. Is that true, what I just read? I, we reading out the book. You could put, you could, if, you, if you got a Bible app on your phone, say it again. Who wrote the Bible? Let's get that. Give me Baruch. Uh, not Baruch. Jeremiah 68 and 11. Psalms. Psalms 68 and 11. And then give me 1 Peter. Because many of our people, right, when truth starts to come out of the Bible, we start saying, well, who wrote the book, right? But I remember being in school, and I remember taking classes like biology. Huh? Because if I say something truthful out of the book, now the question is going to raise... But, Tay, that's why I told you. But Tay, Tay, look, 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 sis, 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 sis. But sis, look, Tay, what I'm showing you is that, Tay, you got to pay attention. I understand, but look, what I'm showing you is that you can pull this up yourself. Somebody, you, give him a Bible. You but, know what I believe, bro. You okay, can't make Tay. me think no different. If Tay. I do what I know, do what I know. Let me ask you a question. You what are some what are some morals? Different. What are some morals that you stand by? Tell me something you stand by today. Okay. What else? Go to work every day. Make sure they got what they need. Like for instance, do you believe in no snitching? I don't go by no I ain't no Okay. So what about marriage and women? Do you think that you're supposed to marry the woman that you have sex with? No? You see what I'm saying? But where did you learn that from? It's something you was taught. So now, what I'm, what I'm showing you is that you're challenging me for reading you something that's actually in the Bible, the book that many of us say we believe in. But you're living your life by something you say that you don't know why you think that way. You was just taught that way. Right? But you say you stand on that. That you don't believe that. So now, it's going to be hard for me to get through to you if that's your mentality. You have to have a mentality of, guess what? I might have been taught wrong, but I have to be open to receiving if there is some truth out there. I'm reading you out of the book. These ain't my words that I made up. So, all of our lives, we've been going by things that we've just been taught. We was taught that it was cool to have girlfriends. We was taught that it was cool to just jump around and jump around, right? No, no, we're about to prove that, read. Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 11. 68 and verse 11. Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 11. The Lord gave the word. So the Lord gave the word, right? Right. Great was the company of those that published it. You see that? And now great was the company of those that published it because a man had to manifest it onto document, onto paper, right? But the Lord is the one who gave the word, right? So you mean to tell me that the Most High God created all this stuff you see us around, you see around us, but he can't, 
inspire man to put down words on a paper. That's why we go through the the Bible to show you the history so that you, we can prove it rather than me just speaking to you about it. Right? Now read verse 68 in Deuteronomy. Let me show you one more thing about that proof. Because how do we get here? What means that, what what mode of transportation did we get to the Americas? Ships. Ships, right? Was it the Royal Caribbean? Nope. It was what? Slave ships. It was cargo slave ships, right, Tate? That's a fact, right? You believe that? What about to Jamaica and Haiti and all these different places, right? We got there off the slave trade, y'all. That's the truth, right? Okay, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the word, remember, is the children of Israel just came out of Egypt. But God says that he would bring us back into Egypt or slavery is what Egypt is referring to. Again, right? Remember, there's a prophecy. Moses is telling the children of uh, Israel this thousands of years ago. Great. With ships. Huh? With ships. So now he said this slavery that you're going to go into is going to be with ships this time. Read. By the way where I speak unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning our homeland we wasn't going to see again. Because have we been home as a people? Many of our people say we've been we from Africa, right? But have we been to Africa as a people yet? No, we still all scattered in various lands, right? Right. Great. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. What nation of people got taken into slavery on ships? And when they got to these various places, they were sold to their enemies. Great. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for a bond man and bond woman. That's slave men and slave women. Wh who did this happen to? Who did this happen to, Tay? That happened to us, right? This the, I, I'm not making this up. This is in the Bible. This is a book that was written years ago. And it's prophesied that if the children of Israel disobeyed God, that guess what? They would be servants at the hand of their enemies. They would serve their enemies for food, for shelter, for clothing. Everything we do, guess what? We serve the damn white man for it. Bring it out. It's nothing that we get here that we get with our own liberty, y'all. But guess what? This is a curse that God put on us, but it can be lifted off. But what we got to do? We got to get right with our father. Right. Right. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bad men uh -huh. and bad women, uh -huh. and no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall redeem you. Because remember, you're probably old enough to remember when you had men like Malcolm X, right? Martin Luther King. All of these men who stood and tried to redeem our people out of our conditions. But are we out of, our, out of the conditions that they was fighting for? No. We in the same conditions, right? We still service at the hands of our enemies. We still fighting for better school, better education, better housing. You see what I'm saying? We still fighting for the same things that we was fighting for back then. So what has changed? How do we get to that part? All oh, praise. Give me First Kings. That's a wonderful question. How do we fix it? Because that's that that's what we should be trying to apply. How do we fix our lives now? Nation is men leading by example.